So my tech talk is about linters and how to install it uh, globally on your editor. So it's constantly monitoring your code. So one thing that I noticed when I was going through the Jupyter phase is um, not a lot of people had linters installed on their editors. Um, that led to a lot of errors and uh, um, when we were solving, uh, going through a lot of our workshops. And because of that, um, you know, we tend to lose time and uh, trying to debug and locate these uh, errors. So, okay, let's get to it. A linter, what is a linter? I'm sure we all know what it is, but for a reference, recap. Uh, a coding uh, linter is a, you know, it's just a type of static analysis that frequently uh, used to find problematic patterns or code that doesn't adhere to certain style guidelines. Um, so why use it? Well, JavaScript being a dynamic and loosely typed language is especially prone to developer errors. So, uh, Without the benefit of a compilation process, JavaScript code is typically executed in order to find syntax or other errors. Linting tools like ESLint allow a developer to discover problems with the JavaScript code without executing it. So it's definitely a great way to prevent syntax errors before they even occur, and it saves time uh, debugging your code. Also, with certain rules applied to your linter, it enforces good coding practices. And because we are mostly uh, just started learning how to code very recently, it's good to develop these good coding practices as early as possible. Um, so sometimes you wonder, well, why is your code working? Well, maybe it's because it's a parsing error, unexpected token, like uh, something your code doesn't belong there. Maybe you're putting extra brackets when you're trying to reformat, or there's some misplaced semicolon somewhere, or maybe undefined variables, or maybe there's something that should be in there. You're trying to utilize some type of variable or function that is not been defined yet, or you haven't uh, imported it into your uh, file that you're utilizing it. Um, you know, the, we are human, so we are prone to making mistakes. And some of the more common uh, mistakes that we all make is uh, misspelling of variables, or maybe sometimes we're running our code and we're trying to grab a value off a variable, yet it's coming out undefined. So you sort of try to sift through large amounts of code sometimes, just trying to pinpoint where it's coming from. And without a linter installed, it's a little bit difficult. Um, but with a linter actually installed, sometimes it's a little bit easier to pinpoint where it's at. So in this code, you sort of see where it is located at on line 19. With a linter installed, it'll tell you what is the uh, error. Uh, I'm trying to use something that is not defined. So if I go to line 19, I clearly see that what I'm trying to call is uh, it's just a simple typo. So. How does this code look to you guys, right? Look familiar? It's Wikistack. So this is something we've gone over in our previous workshops. So when I was working on this with uh, two other people, with even with three sets of eyes, it took us over 20 minutes to simply figure out why this code was not working. We, you start to wonder, um, I mean, it's easy to get lost because of the way it's structured. Um, sometimes code become uh, what's called nested hell. It makes it difficult to debug. Um, using a new libraries for the first time, you wonder, um, am I utilizing the method correctly? It's, is everything uh, spelled correctly as well? Um, are we using it the way we are supposed to be using it? And of course, the driver that was um, uh, managing the code at the moment didn't have a linter installed. So it was difficult to figure out exactly right away where we were going wrong. But the moment it was pushed up to the repo and I pulled it, with my linter installed, I was able to locate exactly where it was at, right there. So in a matter of minutes, my linter was able to pinpoint what the issue was. It was just simple parsing error. Bracket just simply misplaced. That's all it was, nothing else. We were utilizing the SQLize uh, library, just correct, but because just misplacements of one simple curly brace, uh, it threw off the entire code. So one simple fix of that and Everything was okay. Now our code was working just fine. So because we did not have a linter installed initially, that ended up utilizing so much of our time trying to debug it. And it's just not your time, it's the time of everybody involved with that project. So linters, great to have. And it also enforces good practices. Um, you want to be very consistent when you code, right? You want proper spacing, you want to make sure um, if you're declaring certain variables a certain way, you want to make sure it's within uh, very descriptive names. You don't want to be too short, too long. You want proper spacings when you're declaring functions. So it helps 
uh, readability and maintainability of your code if somebody were to take over. So on the left side, you have a, just a very, very badly managed code, improper spacing, very inconsistent. We have um, modules being imported, required that aren't even being used at all. So it's just um, cluttering up our code and the linter points that out for us. So after just clearing that up, it looks a little bit better on the right side, definitely easier to manage and uh, determine what is going on in that code. So now that I've surely convinced you guys why everybody should be using linters, um, how about we, I'll show you how to install it because surprisingly, not a lot of people did have uh, linters installed. So the linter I definitely wanna um, show you guys how to install is uh, ESLint. Um, it is an open source project created by Nicholas uh, Z. Zakis. Um, ESLint is great because um, you are able to customize the rules for your linter in many various ways, uh, just following this link. Um, there are many rules defined for this linter itself, but because it comes uh, installed with no rules, um, it can be a little bit difficult to manage what rules you want installed uh, exactly. So what I want to show you now is just how to install ESLint. So what I did initially and what everybody should do as well is to install it globally because you want this to be applied in all your uh, every single one of your code as you're uh, developing right so you just want in your terminal you can just simply npm install dash g eslint so that'll install eslint globally on your computer so I've done that already and then once you have that installed you want to create a file in your somewhere in your home directory so that the settings are applied uh, globally to all your code. So in my home directory, I could just simply create a file called .eslintrc.json. And I'll just open that in my editor. I'm gonna open my entire thing. And then simply to get some preset rules uh, running for your linter, you could just simply actually do uh, something called extends. And I think it was ESLint recommended. This is the default rules uh, preset by uh, ESLint itself. So if you were to go to the website and go to user guide and rules, uh, this ESLint has many rules you can apply and many rules that you can turn on, turn off, or just simply warn you when something's out of place. So ESLint has a recommended settings. So as long as you have this configured to your configuration file, anything with a check mark next to it will be applied to all your code. So now that I have this file that I've created in, uh, in my home directory, anything below it uh, would be applied to all my code. So if I just close this out and just open up my TechDog directory, um, you'll notice that <laughs> there's an issue. Okay. So there are some errors in this code, but of course you don't see it right away. Um, so the eslint command for that is just simply, if you want to figure out if your code has any issues, you just simply type in eslint and then the file of, that you want to sort of check up on. So typing in this command, eslint will run through the code and see if there are any errors in there. So just looking at my terminal, I could just see that there are errors on line one. I've defined a function, yet it's never used which is weird because I thought I'm using it somewhere in my code. And then I have some mixed spaces and tabs, very inconsistent coding, very sloppy, something that should always be corrected. And add sun, add sun is not defined. So that's where I can determine where my code is going wrong. I see functions being declared but not used, though I intentionally wanted to use it. And I see functions being ran but have not been defined. So just seeing this, um, I can make my corrections and hopefully, um, get my code running uh, perfectly. But of course, um, having to run this command every single time you make an adjustment in your code can be a little bit tedious and sometimes uh, just a nuisance. So I will show you how to install that globally as well. So what Sublime has is something that you can install is um, something called Sublime Linter. So it's a framework for Sublime that when installed onto um, your editor, Sublime, it allows your linter to be monitored at all times so that anytime you code, um, your linter will be watching over your code and uh, just having real time checks on your code. If any errors occur, it will pop up right away and you could solve it right there on the spot instead of somewhere down the line trying to sift through your code and figure out where it is. 
So go into Sublime Linter. Um, you can actually, this is the site right here, and go into the installation page. You could just simply install it um, through Sublime's uh, console page. Uh, console. So go in here. You could install the package for the Sublime Sublime uh, Linter framework. You just simply copy this code here, and in your Sublime text editor, you have your console right up here. Command just tick. You open that up and just simply copy and paste that Python code. Uh, I have that installed already. So once you have that installed, all you have to do is just simply restart your Sublime. And now you should have Sublime Linter installed in your editor. And what you will simply want to do is have the lint mode set to background so it's monitoring at all times. You can have it set to uh, a load and save um, so that anytime you load or save a file, uh, it'll run the linter. And then you just sort of wanna, you want to toggle your linter so that it is enabled. Now it should be monitoring your code at all times. So if I open up my previous directory for tech doc and look up this code with errors, now my linter is now monitoring my code for any errors in real time as I code. And already I'm already seeing mixed tabs and spaces. So I could correct that as I am uh, coding right away. And I see another, another error here. I totally defined but never used. Um, this is totally fine. I mean, you can define functions if you're exporting it. Chances are you would not be using that inside your code. Uh, but because of the rules set to default by ESLint, uh, you could also uh, edit those as well. So that's another thing we could also do with ESLint. So let's open up our ESLinter file. So because these are the rules set by default on the site, you can also add any customized customizable rules as well, something. All you have to do is just type in rules. So if there are additional rules that you would like to turn on by default or turn off, um, you could just simply set it in here in rules and then colon and then just an object. So going back to the site and going to ESLint. So what I don't want to see is an error every time I'm declaring a function. Uh, sometimes I just want to create it to export it to utilize elsewhere. So going to the site, you see all these sorts of rules. So what I really want to turn off is this error that keeps coming that says no unused variables. So I could just simply type no unused variables actually right in here, no unused bars. And I just simply have that to off. Let's shut that off, right? That's totally fine to have unused variables in my case. So I open that back up. And there it is, now the error is shut off. And now there's another error here. Total is def not defined, ah, another typo. So simply correcting that, uh, I won't run into the issue of if I run this file uh, somewhere along the way. So that's how you install ESLint with its uh, Sublime Linter framework to have your Linter running globally and check in real time on all your files. Any questions?